listen to that now and get something new out of it. Just now, as I was listening to that, I got out, you know how normally when we have extended family over, like for a, a family get together, a big feast of celebration of some kind? Well, it's this holy extended family that invites us into their house mm -hmm. and draws us closer to them in their house, especially when we come to the mass to pray you know, there's this beautiful time we say the holy, holy, holy in preparation for the consecration prayer. And oftentimes I get this sense that different saints are coming right into our midst and joining us around the altar, just like angels do, the saints do as well. They want to pray with us, they want to join with us, they're close to us. And, you know, it's like, wow. An extended family that we can always get along with. What a miracle. <laughs> so yes, this extended family of saints begins with the Blessed Mother, a tender, beautiful mother. You know, you talk about comment made at our table, you know, someone made a comment that you know, their grandma had passed away and, and the rest of the family say that, oh, you so resemble her grandma. And, and I said, oh, isn't that beautiful? We're all resembling the Blessed Mother. We're all her sons and daughters. And so we reflect Jesus to those around us just like she did. And that's how she passes on her beauty and her love of the Lord to us and her closeness to us as our mother, as John you know, experienced when Jesus was dying on the cross, that he says, behold your mother. She is our mother. So we do resemble her. And we can grow in great joy and closeness to her that we resemble her. And fathers, I think, extend the same thing for St. Joseph, head of the Holy Family and head of the church, intercessor of the church, terror of demons. You know, that we can resemble St. Joseph. We can resemble the saints. We can look up to them and honor them. So that, that beautiful video, yes. Um, this extended family, almost that we didn't know we have, but we do. That's the beauty and joy of the saints. So the saints have become saints primarily because of what we just did in the adoration of Jesus. They pray, they give their heart and their life and their love to the Lord. All of our life is a living loaves and fishes miracle. We give a little bit, and he gives the rest, which is almost all of it. We give our love, which is so imperfect that we know it is, to receive his great love for us. That's what the saints did. They trusted in his love and power much more than their shortcomings. And I know having done family formation with all five of my children, what you're feeling in terms of some of your shortcomings. You know, how often do you ever feel like, gosh, I'm learning this right along with the kids. You know, am I just like barely a half a step of where they are? How many have ever felt that or do feel that? Yes. It's really common. It's like, it's hard to take all this in all the time, right? But that beautiful relationship we have as a family, we help each other. See, when we're baptized, we're baptized in the fullness of Christ. We're baptized into the church. We're brothers and sisters. I tell people when they're, when they're baptized that as baptized Christians in the spirit, we are closer to other baptized Christians than we are our own blood relatives. Think about it. And so naturally, the closeness we have to the extended family of the saints is the exact same. Those born of the spirit, those baptized with the Holy Spirit, our brothers and sisters, Life does not end with death. It goes to eternal life. And so they are living. What was that famous St. Therese of the Zoo quote? Where she said, I want to go to heaven to do great things on earth. You know, and she does. How many of you have ever experienced one of her rose-scented miracles in your, in, in your life? Yes. You know, they are active in our life. And so the more we engage with that, the more we realize that, the more we live that, then we're going to pass that excitement, that joy on to our children. You know, one of the conversation lines we had at our table about, how do we witness this? 
to our family? What are some things that we do? Well, I always recommend to everybody, especially you know, families that I know that are still having children, put saint names in your children's names, either first name or middle name or both. And then what we always would do is we'd celebrate that saint's feast day, just like a birthday. We'd even invite the godparents over. And we'd like, remember them. Remember what happened. You know, it's your baptism. And we would like, almost like reenact it. You know, like almost in memoriam, right? Just kind of get them excited about this relationship that they have with this saint that they've been named after. So they feel this closeness, right? You know? And then they pick confirmation saint names. It just keeps getting better and better and better. Because now they've got all these relationships with more. And it just keeps growing. And so that's the exciting thing about our faith. It's a living church. It's, it's a church alive here in our midst. How about we help one another in raising our, our children as to be saints, but even helping each other. And the saints do the exact same thing for us. Just because we can't see them doesn't diminish at all their impact. It is significant. And so another important thing to remember about the saints Yes, we get so excited about them because they're praying and interceding for us, but they're a lot like us. I mean, take St. Maximilian Kolbe, for example. He was a practical joker. You know, he would have like done all kinds of tricky things to people and laughed and you know, made fun of them and whatnot. He loved outdoors, skiing, all kinds of things. He just liked having fun. You know, it's like saints aren't boring. You know, life in the Lord wasn't boring. Just ask the disciples. They didn't know what was going to happen from one day to the next. And a lot of times we don't either. But one thing to keep in mind with the saints is that we don't elevate or honor them in terms of like God. You know, we pray for their intercession for us, just like we pray for Mary's intercession, to God, who is the giver of all graces and all power and all protection. And so we honor them. We don't worship and adore Mary and the saints. That's an important distinction. Some people like to discredit our relationship with the saints. It's just an attack for the evil one to try to break up the family. See, the Holy Spirit is always about unifying, and the evil one is always about dividing. And so if he can do anything to keep dividing, he'll throw it in there. But see, we can tell who it's from by the fruit that it's bearing. But see, so it's important for us to have this distinction when people challenge us about our relationship with the saints. You know, because even Jesus said, you know, about Abraham, the quote about him being the father, existing before Abraham, he said before Abraham, I am. He existed before all time. Yet here he was in the flesh. And it was a stumbling block for many people trying to figure out how he worked. So we have many situations where we honor the saints. We have statues in our home, pictures, artwork on our walls, giving memory and honor to the saints. We have them in our churches. So it's important for us to continue to honor them. And we look to Jesus' example, like I said, in leading with Mary, Because what Mary did in giving her yes to allow the Holy Spirit to come upon her to conceive the Lord, that was a very, very difficult thing for her to do. It put her life at risk because she was not yet married. Even Joseph had trouble understanding. So a lot of times there's things in our life that are difficult that we don't understand what God's doing with us. And we can call on saints who've also experienced such great difficulties to be with us, to help us, to guide us. Um, just this last January, or December 28th, I had hip replacement surgery. And two weeks before the surgery, I got this really strong sense in prayer that St. Joseph wanted me to pray for the whole surgeon, surgeon team and everything. And I thought, oh, I guess that makes sense. Orthopedic surgery, carpenter, kind of the same thing, right? A lot of sawing, cutting, pounding, drilling. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm on it. But I didn't understand half of what he wanted to do. Because he basically took over the whole thing. The surgery went flawless. All the troubles I had with my first hip surgery, none of that happened. Um, 
And then two days after the surgery, I'm sitting at home recovering, and I realized that, yes, last June, my father died. And it's like, either my father asked Joseph to get involved, because my dad had both his hips operated on when he was like 53. I got one early and one later. What the heck, the average is probably be the same. And, and Joseph just stepped in. And I'm so grateful for that. You know, and so, I was like, I had a good relationship with St. Joseph before, but now it's like, geez, we're like this, you know? And so they give us these, these glimpses, these experiences, that they are close to us. So look for those, teach your kids these. Um, you know, the excitement that you have for them will, will overflow into their hearts and their lives. So it's just an amazing thing that we have. And as Mary is the witness and model for us, she helps us grow in humility. I mean, pride is the arrowhead of the evil one that tries to separate us from the love of God. And humility is the counterpart for pride. So those people who basically submitted their lives and their hearts to God, said, Lord, I am completely yours. Do with me what you will. And pray that earnestly day in, day out. That's the foundation of becoming a saint, is giving our will to his. That beautiful line, our Father, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're inviting that his will be done. And what did Jesus come to do? Restore the entire world back to the Father as it was before the fall. So his will would be that everything on earth would be under the will of the Father. So we pray that. We give our will to his. It's part of our submitting our will to him. And like I said with St. Maximilian Colby, there are saints in almost every walk of life you can imagine. Religious, saints, there's priests, deacons, bishops, popes, there's married women, married men, children, young, St. Therese, 24 when she died. I think Maximilian Colby was only 24, right? Anybody know that for sure? I think he was only 24. You know, it's kind of interesting when I study some of these saints, it's like, ooh, when I got that age, it's like, ooh, this is how old St. Therese was. What's going to happen this year? Or how many people, well, maybe half of you aren't even 33 yet, but everyone hit 33, it's like, wow, that's the year Jesus died. It's like, wow, this is going to be a really powerful year. What's going to happen? You know, so it's like we think about the lives of the saints and how interacted they are with us. We also can incorporate, because they're so, from so many walks of life. You have saints for every cause imaginable. I mean, who would have thought? <laughs> Isn't St. Therese Lisieux like the saint of TV or something like that? Or something weird? St. Clair. St. Clair, yeah. It's like a cloistered sister. The, maybe it's so that we don't get too much of it. I don't know. Um, it help us regulate it. So maybe that's exactly what that's all about. So, you know, with some of them, though, it's, it's really interesting. But again, just like us, they've got personalities, they've got, you know, experiences, they know what our experiences are like, so they relate to us. They're just like us. They're a lot more like us than we realize that they are. And we're a lot more like them than we realize that we are. <laughs> By the grace of God, you know, when we submit our lives and our will to him, we are transformed. You know, do we believe it? You know, he says, when the Son of Man comes back to earth, will he find faith on earth? Sometimes I think the biggest faith, you know, the little seed, says if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. Sometimes I think that biggest mountain that he has to move is the doubt that's within our own hearts of what his love and grace can do for you and me. Because we see our faults. We see what we're not. Right? You know? Then we got St. Peter. Great. St. Peter's always out there with what he, who he is, right? Whatever. You know, he's just like sticking his foot in his mouth every chance he got. You guys gotta love him. Because I do the same thing, especially with, when I have discussions with my wife. You know, I'll stick my foot in my mouth many times. Then I only realize later, like, gosh, that was really stupid. You know? And I can pray to St. Joseph, like, Joseph. You know, how did you feel? You, you probably never had an argument with Mary, did you? <laughs> you know, we can ask them these kind of questions. And it's like, 
can you just help me with this? <laughs> so every walk of life. So how does someone become a saint? Well, that technical term is canonization. And so one day live a life of, of heroic virtue. Like I said, it begins with giving our heart and our love to the Lord. It doesn't need to be overly complicated. Again, let his grace and mercy flood over us as we draw unto him. He takes over for what we are lacking. All right? So we place our trust and our faith in him. And then after someone dies, a cause is open for their canonization, and the church goes a very thorough examination of their life. And there usually has to be two miracles approved by the investigation that were deemed to be miracles. So I always say, you know, we've got different levels of saints. You know, blessed. You've got different levels. It's like, hey, if you're not that full level of sainthood yet, then look at all the blessed, for example. And when you need a miracle in your life, pick one of them and say, you know, you need a miracle. I need a miracle. Hey, we're in this together, right? <laughs> of course, you know, they don't think like we do. They're not going to sit there and think, yeah, I need a miracle. <laughs> they, don't, they don't care, right? <laughs> it's like they're with the Lord. It's like, wow. But they do care about us. And so, yes, they do realize, yes, you need a miracle. And so it's a wonderful opportunity we have to pray to them. So in addition to blessed, there's venerables, different saint levels. And if through the investigation the church finds them to have lived a heroic life and attributed their intercession to these miracles I was talking about, then that person is declared a saint, canonized as a saint by a pope. And the saints are witnesses and models for us. They show us an example that we can follow. You know, we study the apostles just like they studied everything that Jesus said and did. And even though they didn't understand it at the time, later at Pentecost, which we'll be celebrating in six more weeks, we're going to have outpouring of the Holy Spirit that gave them understanding and power to live out that charism of grace of living as Christ lived himself and spreading that good news to others. It is within us. You know, one of my other favorite saints, uh, one that was fairly recent, born in 1984, is um, St. Cabell, uh, what's her name? Got it here somewhere. Chiara. Chiara Corbella Petrello. I'll say that fast three times. Chiara Corbella Petrello. She was born in 1984. She trusted God heroically. How many people know her story? Oh, this is good. She was married to her husband Enrico. In the middle of both her first two pregnancies, the doctors told her that there were serious health issues with her baby, and then they would not live long after birth. In both cases, they encouraged her to abort, but she said, no, this is my baby. I'm going to care for it as long as I can. Whatever God wants, I will accept it. Shortly after birth, those two children did die. She later said, God gave us two special children, but asked us to accompany them only until birth. He allowed us to hold them, baptize them, and return them to the hands of the Father. See this tenderness of love? care that God gave she and her husband in the midst of great tragedy. They conceived again and were so excited by the reports now of, of how healthy this child was. But halfway through the pregnancy, the doctors had some more bad news. They said, the baby is fine, but it is you, Kiara, who are sick. She had cancer. And the doctors told her to end the pregnancy so she could begin treatments or she might die. Well, she said, I don't care. I've already twice had to allow my child to grow up or have not been able to allow my child to grow up in this world. 
there is no way I'm going to give up this baby. So she gives birth to Francesco and literally hours later begins treatments for her cancer. But despite other efforts, about a year later, she's on her deathbed. Her husband Enrico said to her, this has been so hard, so difficult. But in the gospel, Jesus tells us his burden is sweet and light. Tell me, Chiara, is this sweet and light? And in her very weak state, she whispers, yes, it is very sweet. And she passed away on June 13th, 2012. She's now a servant of God, Chiara Corbella Petrella. And so the beauty and tenderness of giving one's life to the Lord, even in the midst of great suffering, that's the victory of the cross. That's the victory of the saints. They want that for you and for me. And for them to go through these things and offer them to God in love gives us such strength and encouragement that we can do this as well. And they are so close to us. Any person who's struggling with any kind of pregnancy, birth issues, anything, call on Kiara Petrella. She offered that in great love, and the Lord received that in great love. That is the saints. That is the saints for you and for me. They are ever close to us. So let us thank God for them and try to draw close to them because, like I said, they're the extended family that's inviting us into their house, and it's a great house. Thank you. Thank you, Deacon. All right, a couple questions. What can we do to draw closer to Mary and her role as the model disciple, intercessor, and our mother? What are some of your favorite saints to pray with? And then how can we introduce our children to saintly intercession? How can we help ourselves and our children to become saints? So pick one of those and have a little bit of discussion. And then we'll share on that second one. What are some of your favorite saints to pray with?
go to mom, right? <laughs> All right, how about this table? Is Rafer here? St. Teresa the Little Flower. There's a lot of St. Teresa's, right? Yeah. How about back here from your table? Any special saints? It's a female saint. <laughs> Blessed is Nick among women. <laughs> All right. Anybody else here? Good. All right. How about this table? Any in particular? Mother Mary. Amen. Great. All right. Over here, this table. Any special saints? Okay, trying to sell a house and bring the St. Teresa. Danny, all right, devising, good. And I think I missed uh, a table over here. 
So how about this table? Anything else you'd like to add? Yeah. Kelly? Great Monica. And then Anna. Why do you pray to Anne? Or Monica. Um, my husband it was born Catholic, but does not practice, and she just was a practicing uh, Catholic, and her husband and son were not. And after her death, her son was in Augustine, and then um, her husband sent her to a monastery or something like that. So she she was able to see her son after. All right. Yes. We can pray to Saint Monica. All right. So beautiful saints. If you haven't started a, like, a relationship with things, or if this night you're like, this is crazy, <laughs> ready for tonight, just know that they are our extended family, and they they do, we can get to know them, and we can look at the stories of their lives, and we can see how they were able to stay close to Jesus um, through the trials of their life. So the deacon mentioned St. Maximilian Kolbe. St. Maximilian Kolbe um, lived during the time of Hitler, and he was taken to Auschwitz. And so he was captured and he was, he was working there. And um, they, they lined up, uh, there was a, some who had escaped, so they lined up 10 random men um, to be uh, shot, I guess. Uh, and the man that got called forward, one of the men that got forward, he, he started crying, he said, I have a family, I have a wife, and so Maximilian Kolbe said, I will take that man's place. And so the 10 of, they, they led him, and the 10 of them went off, and he ministered to the needs of these nine other um, prisoners, um, who eventually they all died. And so he, he tells us how he could be heroic in the situation that he was in, in his life. He also ministered to them as a Catholic priest, before he uh, did that, he was also um, had a publication out about Mary, spreading the news about how she's our mother um, and can be close to her. So we can pray to St. Maximilian Kolbe when we have these really hard situations, right? And that he, ex his example is how he, he gives up his life for, for his friend, for his maker. So we can look to him for that. So, so many great examples of how um, these saints in, in their time lived heroically. And that can be great examples for us as well. I love reading about the saints. I just, I just love that kind of courage. All right, um, a couple of just announcements on this then. Um, if you go on to Formed, and just, I just typed in Saints Kids. <laughs> and a whole bunch of stuff came up. So if you have that, you have that subscription to Formed, uh, if you've never logged on to form.org, F-O-R-M-E-D.org, then just go and say my parish has a subscription, and then find St. John's. And there's a lot of St. John's, so put in our zip code, 55112, and then St. John the Baptist will come up on top. Click that, and then he'll, they'll just ask for your, your name and your email, and then they'll give you a code, and then you're in. So a bunch of saints things if you're like, I would really like my kids to learn about saints, there's a lot of different videos there. If you just go saints in general, there's a lot of different ones they have just uh, for adults to learn about saints as well. All right, and then I do have a handout before I get to the home lesson. It's called Call Forth Building Parent Partnership Information. So the beautiful thing about saints is they brought, they have this one life to live, right? And God has given them gifts and talents, and they have shared that with others. And so I just want to highlight how we would like to grow um, here at St. John's, just a partnership with parents in our formation program. And summer really is a great time uh, for you to kind of go through the steps that are needed to, in order to be able to uh, come into volunteering here uh, at St. John's. And so I just put together a little thing like this. On the evaluation form, I didn't get a whole lot of people signing up for anything. So I said, I'll do it again. <laughs> this time with a little bit bigger one. Because I know that there are gifts and talents out there. And we have beautiful catechists, um, but we are in need of like substitute catechists. Um, also, our, our catechists are, are older. And we would really love to be um, just throwing out the net 
uh, people who have a talent to be able to teach children or to assist teaching. A lot of times we have two people being a catechist um, for that. So I just listed all the kind of different ways that you could um, pray to God about your own gifts and talents and how you could come into partnership with us so that we can keep our programming strong, we can rally around our children, uh, encourage them in the faith. So a catechist is a teacher, so once a month you would teach, but then once a month you receive training. So this whole night uh, you have upstairs with a smaller community, uh, same presenters are there, so you don't really have to miss anything as a parent um, so that you can uh, serve on these nights. There's also a small group leader for the older grades, substitute catechists, and you can pick the different grades there. Uh, we need volunteers in the nursery and, and the preschool. We are really exploding with young families, which is so exciting. We just love this. Um, but that is a great area, too, to be with our little ones. A hall monitor is someone who makes sure that all order is taking uh, place uh, in the hallways. Then each child needs to go to the bathroom, they escort them to the door, and then they wait, and then they bring them back. Um, if there's any kind of emergency or anything like that, we rely on the hall monitors to do that safety. A lot of times hall monitors will, it's a little bit of downtime because there might be nothing <laughs> going on that night that needs them, but if we do need them, they're there for us. Uh, musicians, be great if you have that talent uh, on when we have prayer services, you can help us out with your gift of song. Uh, and then sometimes just like lesson collating with Jen, putting together all those packets together, um, taking pictures even of this night, which I have to remember to take some pictures here before you will leave, uh, serving dinner. Um, and also, I would love to start a parent program for today if we have people that are interested. So that would be looking at what we do during this parent time. Um, we piloted this program this year. Maybe you're like, I really like what we did, Joe. We should keep doing it. So it'd be great to have a core team that I can talk to, we can have some ideas flowing, um, and then uh, uh, putting that all together. So then the steps to volunteering, there are certain steps from the Archdiocese, and now they're all online, which is really nice, uh, but they are timely too. So as soon as you say, okay, yes, I'm gonna do it, just know you have to have a little bit of time because it, it all kind of, once you start it, you have a certain time to kind of finish it. That's what they just started to do that. So there's a background check, you're signing the code of conduct, and then a virtues class that's now all online. That's why I said summer is a great time to be able to do those so that by the fall we can have our trainings and then we can kind of be put on mission. So if you would like to put your name and email and your phone number and anything that is sparking in your heart um, and turn them into me, that would be great. Or bring them next month too. Uh, but we would love to start partnering more uh, with you and bringing forth the gifts and talents that are in this room. Okay, then our home lessons. I also, the other handout is just a litany. So it's kind of a more of a condensed style. So if you wanted to take that and pray that with your children um, at home. So if you have elementary children, the home lessons uh, for this month, we're gonna have a lesson on Mary, on St. Joseph, and patron saints, the goal of life, and then Easter activities. So the first one on Mary, that Mary was a real person. She walked this earth. She's chosen for a special plan in salvation history. She is our mother to St. John. Uh, at the foot of the cross, Jesus entrusts Mary to John, and we understand that as to the whole church. Uh, also, they talk about in this lesson, Our Lady of Guadalupe, so one of the activities is to cut out Our Lady and then to make some beautiful flowers around different petitions for our, our, uh, our Mother Mary. So they give you some pieces of paper there that you can make flowers. So if you're crafty, you all know I'm not, <laughs> but I won't even try. <laughs> and I have the directors here from the program. <laughs> so I'm not doing the best job in my <laughs> today. But, um, Our Lady of Guadalupe, whenever you see her beautiful portrait, people bring flowers. So this is for you to have uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe, the picture. You can put it in a five by seven frame and then cut out and make some beautiful flowers around her. May is also the month of Mary, so it's beautiful to, um, for us to go to our mother, uh, especially during May. And then the next one on St. Joseph and the patron saints 
that St. Joseph is our role model. And I love this lesson because uh, they're going to be, you're going to be asking your children some questions. And the answer is C, A, B, C. It's always C. I thought that was so funny. <laughs> Yeah, the answer is C. So you know what the answer is already uh, on those. So it's going to talk about his different titles, uh, who he was, and then other patrons as well that we can get to know. The activity has uh, different frames. So in the lineage of Jesus, Joseph, of course, is of the line of David. And so they're going to have you do your own lineage as that well. And just to remember that these saints are part of that extended family. So if you have saints, you can put actually them in the pictures, or you can start to adopt other saints. And then the goal of life, our life on earth, is just a short blip in time, but it has true eternal value and purpose. So the saints provide examples and encouragement for us along the way as we strive to live a holy life and to get to heaven. So this is a game of life, so you'll have your board, on how we are all striving to get to heaven. So there's two sheets that go one to the next. And then you're gonna play it like you would life. So you have your different grace cards, rolling the dice and moving and then doing along the way. Oops, I couldn't tell you to do it. So enjoy that. That would be especially a fun one. Like when I was doing the, uh, these lessons with my children, I'd be like, that's going to happen. That's a great one that we just keep doing over and over at the cabin. Or someplace that you uh, maybe even take and put it in your car when you go to a park and the kids are whining about something. It's like, you know what, we're going to talk about things. That's a good game up. And then the last one is the Easter activity. So if you uh, buried your Alleluia banner, how many of you buried your Alleluia Yes, yes. Okay, my kids love that. So bury the Alleluia banner next year. So that you can uncover it now because now we can say the word again. <laughs> uh, so unbury your Alleluia. And then also there's little snips for your Easter basket that were in there too that centered more on the resurrection. In May, we have our, our final family formation for the, for the year. So we are going to have normal time, 5.30 dinner, 6 o'clock program. And then at the end, we regather with your kids well, in a little bit early. We're going to invite you to go downstairs, and the middle schoolers this year were all doing salvation history from Genesis to Revelation. And so you're going to be able to go down there, and they're going to walk you through salvation history, and the different groups are going to tell you what they learned. How fun is that going to be, right? Especially for your little ones to see that. And then we'll have a social, too. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right, early registration. You can register now. We're doing an early registration this year for Sunday school, family formation, middle school formation, and confirmation. So that early rate is $65. We'll send you the link in the next one. So if you're like, yeah, we'll be here, let's just register it up. That helps us to plan, you know, too. Um, uh, the rate will increase in August to 85. And then we just want to say congratulations to our 15 new Catholics that came in at the vigil. I was very busy. I was very happy. <laughs> so um, when you see them, welcome them into the church. Also, this Sunday, we will have nine of our older students who will be making their first communion. And then to pray for our second graders. So May 6th and 7th is when they will be making their sacrament. Uh, also, they have a retreat coming up on Sunday, April 23rd from 2 to 5. So the parents attend uh, with that. And then middle school, you'll have formation all of this month. So the 12th, the 19th, the 26th, and then May 3rd will be the last one for middle school. Also, youth group will be on April 21st. It's in combination with a group called the Masca. So we'll be going to their camp. So they rotate different parishes, and they picked St. John's to be one of them. So just know on that night, on April 21st, um, we're going to be, they're going to be here. So there's kind of a pre-registration for that. So Sarah is uh, sending that out. Um, so try to pre-register for that. And proms coming up if you have an older a student, actually eighth graders can attend that as well. Eight through 12, prom is this Friday. Uh, they're going to be all neon, it's gonna be awesome. And then also Totus Tuus, uh, Vacation Bible School is full, but Totus Tuus, we are about 85% to capacity. So if you're thinking about registering for uh, that camp, please do that soon. 
And then CYC, three girl spots just opened up. So if you have a girl uh, in those eight grades, five through eight, who would like to attend. Uh, and then mission trip in Steubenville, uh, contact Michaela quickly. Those are filling up. And then um, becoming Catholic, our CIA. So if you are either knowing someone who uh, would like to become Catholic, or if you're sitting in the room saying, okay, I don't know I'm not really Catholic, but I might be interested in it, um, I'm gonna do an information session between the two masses on Sunday, April 30th. And also, every year, our candidates have a sponsor that walks with them with all the sessions. So if you're like, hey, you know what? Might be something I would be interested in. Come to the information session, because uh, then we can, you can kind of know what we do. And it'll be in St. Joseph's Hall, just in the corner, right over here, okay? And then if you're interested in Catechetical Institute, that's a two-year program. Um, they are taking registrations now. So on the weekend of the 29th and the 30th, they're gonna have um, some testimonies out here in the, in the foyer. Just to remind you about the April 22nd, Compassion New Brighton. So if you would like to be a volunteer for that, it's a beautiful way to serve the people in our community. And then if you haven't done the evaluation yet, I have a couple of copies there. You can certainly turn them in either tonight or next month. And thank you for everyone who did. We had a, had a much bigger turnout than we have. And yes, I do read them, and I do calculate them. <laughs> so so uh, please give me your ideas and everything. We'd love to hear back from you. All right, that is it for our night. Thank you for bearing with this heat. No one ever thought it would be so hot. Um, and, and let's just open ourselves up to uh, the saints and how they want to actually minister to us and with us. All right, all right, may God bless you all. Have a good night. You're welcome.